let me show you some basic features of Forms Boss Plus. When you first open the program, it will come to the main menu, which has four tabs. This first tab is for the alphabetical listing of Accord Forms. The second tab is for the numerical listing of the same forms. This is your Reports tab, which uh, has various reports that you can run based on the information that you enter in Forms Boss. This Management tab is where you'll spend most of your time, especially in this Customer's Prospects form. So let's take a look at that. The Customer's Prospects form will automatically open up to the last customer that you were working with, and you'll see all of their information entered here. You'll notice that there's a row of command buttons across the top of the screen so that you can navigate your way around in this uh, customer prospect form. This button will take you to the first record, this one to the next record, this one to the prior record, and this one to the last record. This button would create a new record. If you click that, it will give you a blank screen to enter a brand new customer or prospect uh, in. We're actually not going to do that right this second, but that's how you would create a new record. This is the Save Changes button, so if I wanted to add a P.O. box here for my customer, and then save it with the Save Changes button. This is the Revert to Previous Save button, which means if I take something out, if I make some change, and then I decide that I don't want to save those changes, I would just click this button and it would uh, take out any changes that I had made since my last save. This is your Refresh Data button. That is useful if you have more than one user in Forms Boss Plus on different machines. Um, so that if someone enters something on another machine that you want to be able to see their information on yours, you would just click that Refresh Data button. The Delete Customer feature has actually been moved to the File menu to avoid accidental deletions. Um, so you actually would go to the File menu in order to delete a customer if you needed to do that. This is the uh, Search Customer button. If you click on this button, you'll be able to find any customers that you have uh, listed. You can search by commercial name, last name, or first name. So you just uh, set one of these features here, and then you just start typing in the Search Characters box here. And it will take you to that customer, and you can just uh, double click on it or click to highlight it and then click OK, and it'll take you straight to that customer. This is your print this record uh, button. It would produce um, a report about this customer. Let me show you what that looks like. You've got some options about whether you want to print a report or an envelope, um, whether you want to print your accord log or transactions, uh, return address, all of those options there. So let's see what it looks like with those default options. You'll see that it created a report for us with all of the information about this customer. It's got their dependents, their vehicles, their drivers, uh, any notes that you would have added would be included in this uh, report. Um, so that's what you would use there for the, uh, the print feature. And then you can actually print this out if you wanted to, or you can save it somewhere. Um, there are gonna, there's another tutorial about reports that will go into more detail about this screen, but I'll just show you that that's uh, what happens with that. This is the Copy This Record button. If you click this, it will produce a uh, duplicate copy of the customer. It will put it right on the screen for you, and it carries over some of the information um, that you had in your original customer. It carries over the spouse's, but the spouse's information, but not the dependents, um, and not the vehicles and drivers, and not the forms. So you would have a duplicate basic uh, copy of the customer, but you would be able to enter all these extra things fresh without deleting your previous customer um, that has all of this other information uh, recorded in it. This is the Send a Memo button here. Let me show you what that feature does. 
when you click the send a memo button it just creates a little notepad for you with uh, your agency information and some of the customers basic information listed there and then you'll be able to type in on screen here and just uh, uh, create this memo Um, and you can save it uh, somewhere on your computer however you would like to. I'm not actually going to save this one, but um, that's how you would send a memo. Now down here in the basic information about the customer, you can uh, click on whichever field you want to go to directly or you can navigate between fields using your tab key on your keyboard. Um, and again, all of this uh, basic information is self-explanatory. You would just type in um, the, the customer's information. I want to draw your attention to this category field down here. You'll see if you click on this little downward triangle that there's a list of categories um, that you can use to group your customers. Um, you can also add categories to this list by clicking this little Add Edit Categories button. Um, it brings up the list and it allows you to add a new record here. And you can save that record or you can also delete uh, records that are in here um, if you wanted to. And then you click OK and it takes you back to uh, your customer screen and you can select whichever category you want to use for this customer. You've got a spot for your customer's email address here. I will be talking about email in another tutorial, uh, but that's your customer's email address. And if you wanted to send an email to that address, you would just click this button right here. The date entered for this customer will appear automatically when you first create this customer. If for some reason you want to change that, you just click on this calendar button here and you can make any changes that you need to to the date. This information here is uh, self-explanatory. You just enter in uh, whatever you require there. The expiration date works exactly as the date entered with a little calendar pull down there. Um, the sales representative is an important feature inside Forms Boss as well. You'll notice here it works very similarly to the categories uh, field on the other side where you can just pull down from a list here of your sales representatives and select one. Or you can also access the sales rep form uh, by clicking this Add Edit Sales Reps button. So this is the sales rep form, um, which is similar to the customer prospects form, just a little bit more simplified. Um, but you can enter your sales rep's information here in the top. It's got the same navigational buttons across the top of the screen and similar tabs down here at the bottom with notes. You can add a photo of this sales representative and a signature and uh, all the policies that you have for this um, sales representative assigned to this representative will be listed here in, in this uh, tab. Um, I'm going to show you more about uh, policies and signatures um, later on so we won't go into too much detail but I wanted to give you a look at the uh, sales rep form and uh, let you know that that's a useful feature uh, in Forms Boss that you can assign sales reps to various customers and policies. Let's close out of the sales rep form. Go back to the customer prospect form. You'll also see here this is where you would decide whether this uh, record needed to be labeled as a customer or a prospect. So you can choose which is which there. You can also check this box to make this an inactive customer uh, or leave it unchecked for this to be an active customer. Down here across the uh, middle of your customer prospect form you'll notice a row of tabs. This notes tab is uh, just for your reference. You can record any kind of notes um, that you need to about this customer, interactions that you have with uh, him or her, and just allowing um, for any information that you need to keep track of. Um, the personal section gives you the basic information about this individual um, with their social security number, their birthday, those sorts of uh, data fields. The dependent information tab um, shows you the uh, dependents for this 
customer. We've got the spouses tab with their anniversary and um, the spouse's birthday and email. Um, we've also got an image tab here that would allow you to put a photo of this um, customer or signature. Uh, again, I'm going to show you more about loading signatures later, but basically you would just click uh, either one of these in order to add a photo or a signature that you had saved on your computer um, elsewhere. The Transactions tab is a place for you to keep track of any transactions that you have with this customer. The Forms tab is a, certainly an essential part of Forms Boss um, here on the customer screen. You can add a form for this customer just by clicking this green plus button right here. It will bring up your forms list dialog. When it does so, it will automatically have the forms arranged by form name, uh, but you can also um, choose to have them listed by form number. And you can search for the form that you're looking for rather than having to scroll down through the list by just typing either the number or a word from the title of the form in this, uh, this search box here at the top. So I'm going to open up a commercial insurance application for this customer. Just make sure that your form is highlighted and then click OK. And it will pull up that form for you. You'll notice when it opens the form that it will have your agency information pre-filled um, in the appropriate spot on the form. And then it will also, if you scroll down on this form, you can see it, it also pre-filled the uh, customer information into the form. And you'll be able to just type in on screen to fill out the rest. I will do a separate tutorial just about the Accord forms. Um, so I'm not going to go into any more detail in this basic navigation tutorial. But that is how you would add a form for a customer. You'll notice that when we close out of the form, it is listed here under the uh, Forms tab. You've got this Form Description field over here. That is just for your reference. If you wanted to add a description, you would just click this little hand holding a paper uh, button, and it would give you a chance to uh, enter a form description. You'll see it puts the description there. That's very useful if you have uh, several of the same form listed for a customer. That way you'll be able to just determine which form is which from your list. This tab is for the email log. There is a whole separate tutorial about email, um, so I will just mention that in passing at this point, but that's where your emails will be listed as you email this customer. Here's your Vehicles tab for this customer. Um, you can add a new vehicle by clicking this button here, or you can open up one of the vehicles that you already have added um, just by clicking on uh, the one that you would like to take a look at. Here's the vehicle form um, for this vehicle for this customer. It's got all of this information pre-filled for you, or not pre-filled, you filled in this information uh, for this customer. And uh, you can use this information to pre-fill on some of the forms. Um, and again, I will show you more about that in the forms tutorial. Uh, but it is handy to keep track of your customer's vehicles all in one place here on the customer prospect form. The driver's tab uh, and the driver form works very similarly to the vehicle form. So you can add a new driver by clicking here, or you can open up a driver that you already have entered just by double clicking on it in the list. So this is what the driver form looks like. It's a little bit more simplified than the uh, vehicle form. But again, you, you enter in all of your drivers for your customer here, and then you'll be able to select those drivers to, to pre-fill into certain forms as needed. Um, so this is uh, where you want to keep all your driver information for your customers. The Communications tab um, allows you to just keep track of any communications that you have with this customer. 
um, you'll be able to just enter in um, any information that you need to here with the um, communications. You would just add a new record here. You can delete the record with this button, save, revert to the previous save, and refresh data all within this communications tab. The documents tab uh, works um, similarly. Um, there actually is a separate tutorial about documents, so I will not show you how to create a new document right now, but all of the documents that you have created for this customer will be listed there in their documents tab. The links tab um, allows you to link to files and folders on your computer that are related to this customer. In order to do that, you would just uh, either click this button to add a new file link or click this button to add a new folder link. Let me show you how that works. It will just open up a navigational window here where you can select um, whichever folder that you want to um, link into this customer. So I created a folder link there. If I wanted to delete that link, I would just click here. If I wanted to go directly to that link, execute it, I would just click this button with that link highlighted. So that's what the links tab is for. These other two tabs, the policies tab and the invoices tab, would not be available if you had not purchased the management option of Forms Boss. Um, they, they wouldn't even be visible here. That's Those two features are part of the management option. Um, but any policies that you create for this customer will be listed under their policies tab. Um, and you'll be able to just see them all and access them from, from here. Um, there is a separate tutorial about policies again, so I won't uh, elaborate too much on that here. Invoices is the same way. Uh, you'll be able to see them listed here um, and you can add a new one by clicking this button um, and it would take you to the invoice form which again we're going to talk more about in, a, in another tutorial. So that gives you a rundown of what you can find, what's available on the customer and prospect form uh, within Forms Boss. If you close out of this you'll go back to your main menu. I wanted to show you one feature of the main menu um, on the forms tabs here, the alphabetical and numerical listing, if you right click on the forms list, you'll have the option to hide or unhide certain forms. You'll see right now they're all listed in the unhidden category, but let's say for example that um, you were in uh, a state other than California and so you did not need to see this California specific state form here. You could just click on the one that you wanted to hide and then click this red arrow button to shift it over to the hidden area. Um, and again you can select a whole list of forms to do that with by just clicking on one and holding down the shift button and selecting um, the bottom one in the list and you can move that whole section over. You can also uh, click and hold down on the control key and select uh, multiple forms one at a time like that and then hide them. And it works the same on the hidden side so if you wanted to unhide any forms that you had previously hidden, you would just select them and then use this green arrow to move them back over to the uh, unhidden side. So that gives you a useful way to narrow down your forms list within uh, the alphabetical and numerical listing on the main menu and also in any forms list uh, that you would pull up from the customer screen or um, elsewhere you would be able to uh, limit to the forms that you can see, um, make it less complicated with this hide and unhide feature. So that gives you some basic information about how to operate Forms Boss Plus. There will be other tutorials with more specific details, but this is uh, how you navigate around in the, with the basic features.